Meredith McCoy, if you guys didn't, I'm figuring you already knew that. It's just our question and answer panel. So I'm here to talk a little bit with you guys and answer your questions. I can give you a little bit of a bio a little bit. I think if you were in another room, you may have heard. Um, but I did have been doing the voice of Android 18 for almost 22 years, which is a long time <laughs> with a character, which is actually fun because I was like telling someone the other day, I was like, they're doing some sort of live action thing. Don't you think they should at least give me a shot? I mean, I know this character. <laughs> I'll work out. Come on, guys. <laughs> I can learn martial arts. It's not a, it's not too hard. Um, I've, yes, exactly. I'll just do some intense training. I actually had this, I CrossFit. And so I have some uh, guys in the gym who are super Dragon Ball Z fans. And they were like, just tell them we will work her out. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> Um, so Android 18, I did launch in Dragon Ball, um, Lieutenant Maria Ross and Full Metal Alchemist. I have done, um, uh, Kagura and Fruits Basket, got to sing some of their theme songs. Um, I played Atsuko and Yu Yu Hakusho. Let me see, which other ones? Uh, I was Fujiko and Lupin the Third. And lots, lots of fun animes um kind of stumbled into it actually funny enough people ask like how um i got started in it and um it was kind of an accident i was doing a theater show and um dr Giro was my director and he was directing the theater company that i was in and he was like hey um it was me and Laura Bailey were doing theater together and we were in college together. And she said, and he said, they're auditioning some girl actors. You should go and try out for this. And so we said, okay. And I went in there and I can guarantee they booked me over Laura because I was blonde. They went, oh, she looks like Android 18. <laughs> and then shortly after they booked uh, Laura as well on, I think it was Kid Trunks. Um, but that was kind of how it all started. And in those days, it was a very small world. Um, it was not, it didn't go through agencies. It wasn't the big time at the, at the time. So we became a very small little family where we got to all audition for each other. All the engineers and directors knew each other. And it was just, uh, all the actors knew each other for the most part. And it became a little family. So I'll open it up to you guys. Since this is such a small little group. We can, you know, I don't think we need microphones. We can all just talk, but I'd love to hear if you guys have any questions, any thoughts, any, yeah. Ooh, okay. Most difficult role. Well, I will say, honestly, the most difficult role probably in the beginning was just going to be Android 18 and not because of the character as much as the, how it was done. Because when I started, it wasn't digital. It was on tape and we had paper scripts. I mean, this was old school. <laughs> and so, and I remember the first time Chris Sabat was the director and I had my first like big fight scene and he was like, okay, um, you know, you're going to do some fight noises. And I was like, he goes, have, have you ever gotten in a fight? And no. <laughs> He's like, okay, well, all right. And then I got in trouble because every time I would do a fighting noise, I'd be like, ha! Ah! <laughs> and I'd like laugh at myself after. He's like, you can't laugh after like every scene. <laughs> so I've gotten better at not laughing at myself after every hi ya or running noise or whatever that is. Um, so that was my, I would say, my most difficult role, just getting used to it, matching mouth flaps. I mean, it's so much easier now because they can tweak things, they can move it. You know, there's so much more digitally that you can do. And back then you had to nail it. So it really was a, I mean, and sometimes you do 30 takes. I mean, now you do four at the most, you know, it just usually doesn't take that much time. Um, and then you asked, what's my favorite character? That's hard. It's like, that's hard because it's usually... It's usually the one that I'm doing at the time, you know, you just kind of get into it and, and they're such fun characters. I, I love launch because she's so crazy and bipolar. So that's just a really fun character. Um, and I have to love Android 18 because I've just been doing it for so long. Um, Kagura was really fun in Fruits Basket too. 
but she's also a bipolar character, which I'm like, guys, why are, am I getting cast at all? <laughs> are you saying something to me here with this? Wait a second. <laughs> Anything else? What else you got? Any questions? Thoughts? Yeah. Totally. You know what's really funny? So I did it. So I was, I did a lot of regular acting as well, early days. And so I auditioned for the Kenny Chesney, There Goes My Life video, and I booked it. You know what I found out? You know, that whole um, Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing? Guys, I was in that film. I was in that music video with Amber Heard. She's playing me. Like, I, she's the my daughter in that because I was the, and I had no idea. So I, was like, and I didn't know that, but my friend, uh, my, no, my brother-in-law was like texting me. He's like, did you know you've met Amber Heard? I was like, I have like, what? Amber Heard? it was her first acting job. And so we were in the Kenny Chesney, there goes my life video. So a small claim to fame. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> Maybe not so much. What else you got? Anything else? Ooh, I actually haven't been, well, I went to Comic-Con in San Diego years ago before this was even a big thing. And it was funny because I had no idea, you know, what it was about. I mean, I remember Chris saying, okay, Mary, you're going to go and sign some autographs. I was like, who's going to want my autograph? <laughs> and then they were like, and then I asked, well, am I dressing up as my character for everyone? And they're like, no, Meredith. They'll all be dressed up. You're not dressing up. I was like, well, what am I doing? Where am I going? <laughs> and that was when they did like the Hummer tour, actually. So they had like this big Dragon Ball Z Hummer and we would go to different conventions and do that. But yeah, so that's, that was my intro into the Comic-Con world. I have no idea. Starting off with the big conventions. Yep. And that's when Sunny and Chris and all of us would come and go do that together. So that was a Damien Clark, um, who plays Cell. Like we were all we were all in the same agency too. So we would do lots of acting outside of outside of the anime world as well. So that was fun. What else you got? Not so much about the, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. I mean, I've got to love the Android saga because that was just the Vegeta fight. You know, it's just so iconic. You can't not love those. Um, she's so fun too because, you know, she's the horrible bad guy that everybody loves to hate hates to love you know that whole thing and then she ends up becoming a good guy but still being just as sassy so um yeah I mean the, it was fun having her come back with 17 and that having that whole you know that whole scene with uh 17 going crazy and us fighting him and then him coming back around so that was fun too but yeah I would probably say just the beginning Vegeta how she loves shopping, but she's ready to kill everybody. You know, I had some, another guy in my gym. He was like, man, she is such a badass in the movies, but she's really nice. I was like, I, mean, I guess they expected me to be really, <laughs> like, like really tough. And I don't know, hardcore. I do work out really a lot harder when the guys in there, they're like, oh, we're huge Android 18 fans. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to try harder. <laughs> Yeah, you know, have to do more pull-ups than I normally do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I try to lift a little more weight, <laughs> look like I'm doing something hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
favorite line. Honestly, we laughed so hard um, with the Krillin line with Android 18 whenever, you know, he flies off and she's like, he's so cool. <laughs> you just can't not love that. Um, but I always, I always love to like, how, how sad to work so hard for so little. <laughs> So she's just so fun because she's so monotone, but she's so snarky at the same time. For sure. If it's Andrew 18, you're asking. But otherwise, launch, you know, with her being so ditzy. I used to, um, if you guys know who Master Roshi, uh, Mike McFarland, we always had a joke going back and forth um, because he uh, he was always the kind of sleazy character that was always after launch and so we were in a quite of other thing a few things and so we had this running joke that i was like oh, moshi <laughs> i don't know where i got that the master roshi i called him moshi so anyways we've had a <laughs> it was always fun to uh like get to know all the actors and their personalities and get to hang out with everybody any of you guys aspiring voice actors yeah Oh, fun. Yeah. Yes. Falls in love. What? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So true. Yeah, it really does. There's a whole arc. You know, I feel like in some ways I've grown up with the character, you know, because you get to go, you know, from scene to scene. And you actually, interesting enough, within acting in anime, it's very different than acting in, like, say, a movie or, a, um, you know, a, a theater show or any of the other kinds of forms of acting because you actually don't get to prepare beforehand. Like, you don't get to character develop. You don't get to do all the things that you would normally think as an actor. You don't even get to see your lines before the one line shows up that you're about to do. All right, next line, you know? And so within that, you're really having to learn to act on the spot, direct, trust your director. So a lot of times they're just giving you the scene beforehand they're giving you what's kind of happening like you're not getting to watch them or find out what's going on you're just walking in and they're saying okay so right now so and so is really angry because of such and such is happening and they'll just give you a little rundown so here's your scene now we actually get to watch the scene before we didn't necessarily get to because again it took too long because it was tape but now you get to watch the scene and then you get to um then you're um, acting in it. But it's it's one of those things where you have to learn to immediately respond, immediately find a character, um, and it doesn't get to be done beforehand. So that's always fascinating. Way more. <laughs> That's probably true. You're, you're always never allowed to tell what's actually about to happen. So maybe they just don't trust us. And that's why. <laughs> True. Very true. <laughs> For sure. All right. Other questions? What you got? What you got? Ooh, good question. What I do differently. Uh, you know, I don't know that any character I would play super different as much as I think 
being older, I'm a lot more confident, you know, just in, in general, I think before I questioned, actually, it's funny. Chris Sabat was like, he, it, 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 there'd be a line and I'd be like, I'd go through the line. I'd be like, um, um, this room is closed. This room is closed. This room is closed. You know, and I would give him like 50. He's like, Meredith, you don't have to give me 20 line reads. <laughs> like One is fine. You know, but I just, I think I was just in that space where I wasn't really confident as an actor. I wasn't necessarily confident in myself and who I was at the time. So I was a lot more hesitant. I think nowadays, just knowing a bit more who I am and feeling confident as an actor, I just go in a lot more confidently and it just, it changes. I think every part of things, you know, you just, you handle everything a little differently when you feel more confident in who you are. I hope that helps. <laughs> Any, um, with the other voice actors who are wanting to be voice actors. Um, one of the, I know I usually ask like, what are your favorite tips for that? Um, one of the things that I have learned, I mean, I know that like Sunny and um, I think there's like three or four people who actually give like voice acting classes, but the best part of the class is that you immediately get a demo reel and your demo reel nowadays, because everything now goes through agencies you know, so everybody's booking through agencies. You don't usually get in the door like you used to, where you just like know somebody like me knowing Dr. Giro at the time. <laughs> and um, you, so nowadays you actually have to, you know, kind of have an acting agency, you know, who has your demo reel and all that kind of stuff. So if you can find someone like a Sunny Strait who's doing a class and you're wanting to learn it, that's a great way because they're going to, you're going to usually walk away with a demo reel right afterwards that you could submit to an agency. So I always feel like that's a helpful tip. And there are some really great coaches. Um, I wish I could think of some of their names right now. Who, who's Mr. Satan? Why can't I Chris Rager. I think he, he does classes, which he's a blast. He's hilarious. He used to do, when I met him first, he was doing uh, theater, theater shows. Uh, no, improv shows. He was a comedian. Oh my gosh, they're hilarious. Uh, and so I'm sure you'd love to see their panels too, because they'll just have you cracking up the whole time. <laughs> what else? What, what else you got? What else you want to know? Comments, favorite characters, favorite moments. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've been talking to Chris Sabat saying, you know, because I haven't for a long time, I wasn't doing any uh, new characters. I was only just doing reoccurring roles. Um, I've really focused more on um, my other job, my other passion, songwriting and singing and uh, worship music is what I typically do. So I'd kind of been in that whole world for a long time and just hitting reoccurring characters. Um, but in the world of uh, setups where you can have a home studio, I'm like, oh, it actually might be functional to be able to do both. Um, it might actually work out because a lot of times you're having to go in, you know, it takes a lot of time and with me having three kids and all the other things, it's just not always practical. So I set up a studio in my daughter's closet, very glamorous. I uh, had to do one recently, like a, for a video game. I don't know if I'm allowed to say, so I won't say, but for a video game for another company. And so they were like, we need your remote setup. And you guys would have been dying laughing at me. Like I was putting blankets up, you know, like <laughs> trying to make it like sound quality, like the entire time. Like I, my, my daughter was like, mom, why are you in my closet? <laughs> trying to get a sound, sound set up <laughs> and I had the um computer in the back you know with like uh korea and the director and then the, trying to make just hoping the engineering would work chris Sabat was like man this could be a total disaster he did a practice round with me um because he's very kind he was like this sounds like a recipe for disaster you're on a hot spot in your daughter's closet <laughs> he's like this could be bad but it worked out so um, so yeah, I mean, I'm looking to, I haven't like, I've seen a few auditions come through. I haven't done it. If there's another one that pops up, that seems interesting. I might, I might submit for a role. It's been a while though. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's fun for sure. I'd still do video games and things. Those are always fun, but very hard on your voice. Do I play video games or just voice them? No, I don't play them. My kids play them. They're like, mom, I played you the other day. <laughs> I was like, did I play well? Like, was I good? <laughs> was I bad? Did you die? What happened? 
playing Andrew at 18. Um, he was like, I finally got to the 18 saga. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, my my kids, if like there was somebody was like, how does it feel to have your mom as somebody who's famous? And they're like, she's not famous. <laughs> kids keep you uh, very humble. <laughs> They'll tell you exactly what they think. So they're like, shit whatever but then they found out that like dragon ball z is a lot bigger so my son has been getting into it so we'll see so he's kind of like mom could you sign some stuff and have for my friends <laughs> so that's been a whole thing all right which which ones are your favorite i'd love to hear from you guys what what characters or what animes are your favorite it doesn't have to be mine i won't be offended Ooh, yeah. Yeah, she was actually, okay, if you're asking harder characters, she's kind of a harder character because she was very emotional and drunk, but drunk, like emotional in a, in a very, not like over exuberant, you know? So that's, it was a very toned down. I, I feel like she was kind of, well, her, between her and Maria Ross was the most like my voice. Um, she was one of my more mature characters, but yes, the drunk mom. Yeah, I remember that one being very shaky and really having to get into the emotions of, yeah, because obviously she's dealing with a lot if she's hiding her pain with her, <laughs> with her alcohol. So, yeah, wow. But that, that role was a long time ago. Actually, maybe, I don't know if I'm, please don't tell anybody if I'm not supposed to say something, but I, I just played her again recently in something. Okay. It was only like one or two lines in something, but I did do something with her record. I was like, whoa, blast from the past. This has been a long time. Because that was years ago. Is that one of your favorites? Is the Yu Yu Hakusho? Oh, awesome. Yeah, no, it's that one's been a long time. That one's Justin Cook was the main character on that one, right? Yeah, it. Oh, a hundred percent. Totally. Yes. Oh, it totally is. Yeah, no, when I first started, Justin Cook was the engineer, Chris Savitt was the director, and they both were the ones who picked me, I guess. Yeah, no, it's old, old time, long, 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 long time ago. But it's so fun now that when I see them all, I mean, it's like we literally grew up together, you know? It's like it's a little family. It became that way anyway. A little studio above a bank. <laughs> it really wasn't glamorous at all. <laughs> it was actually very hard work. And then, um, and then with all the yelling and fighting and any of those scenes, I mean, just coming out of that booth, like, whoa, sweat. They, for a while there, had cameras, like, in the booth. And I was like, this is not cool. Like, <laughs> because, I don't know, I, I guess I don't really get to see other actors do their thing. But when you're in there by yourself, and usually people aren't in there, but, you know, you have to do a fighting scene or something. I mean, you don't stand there. <sighs> you know, you got to get into it. <laughs> so... You know, or if you're a little girl, I'd be like, <laughs> I can like play in the role. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are going to use this footage against me. I just know it. This is going to be blackmail footage. <laughs> but yes, so those, those are early days. Five minutes. All right, five minutes. So last, last questions, whatever you'd like to know. Or again, you can tell me your favorite anime. I'm good with that too. Yeah. Ooh. What's a role I wish I could have voiced? You know what? Biggest regret. I I was asked to do Fruits Basket again, doing Kagura, and I was so busy. I wasn't able to fly back in time with the dates, and so I gave that role up. And that was sad for me because I actually really enjoyed. So if I could take that back, if I could have figured out a way to get there, I would have done that. Um, another character I would have loved to have played. Um... I don't know. Like I've I've loved all the characters that I've done. I, I think it would have been fun just to 
Yeah, I don't know. I probably would have loved playing one of the fighter boys at one point. I mean, you know, playing like Kid Trunks or Kid Gohan or, you know, some something like that. Those kids roles are always kind of fun, but they're also very hard on your voice. <laughs> so maybe it's a good thing I didn't. But that would be my biggest regret if I if I had one. Anything else? Yeah. No. No, it is very dark. But I enjoyed Lieutenant Maria Ross. She was she was probably my character with one of the most with the most dialogue, I would say. I don't know why they cast me again with these characters with one liners. Maybe maybe I should <laughs> maybe I should wonder about that. I'm gonna ask them. Why do you guys can why am I the one liner queen? <laughs> yeah, no, um she was she was a fun character, but very serious at the same time. So, and then that's a dark one. So, you, so, I, but what would you say, like, out of like Yu Yu Hakusho can be kind of that way as well? It can have some heavy into it. Blue Gender was heavier. Yeah, I was in Blue Gender. Who was I in Blue Gender? I don't know. I'd have to look it up again. It's too long ago. Yeah. That's like 22 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago. I'll look it up on Wikipedia and tell you. Thank you. Oh, don't. I'm not offended. I, like I said, I couldn't even remember who I play. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. Look, we're going deep here. Okay. Yeah. Well, I started out singing with a 16 piece orchestra when I was 16. And so I sang jazz music and then I went into smaller jazz bands and sang with the jazz bands and got to do all that. Then I sang pop. So I did a lot of pop um, as well. Then I sang with show bands. So show bands, you hit all kinds of genres. So I think I would have to be like a mixed genre. Like it would have to have a lot in it because I mean, a song like that, you know, you've got a lot of different styles and a lot of different life. I feel like I've lived, I've lived all over the place, done a lot of crazy things. So I don't know. I think, um, I'd have to sing something like I follow the wind <laughs> wherever it leads me. Cause I always, we have just, my husband and I have just lived this crazy adventure of wherever we feel like, wherever we feel like God is moving, we end up going and we've done some crazy things. So my song would have a lot of, a. Uh, mood changes <laughs> as it flows that's a great question though if i thought more of it i would give you a better answer off the top of my head that's, that's probably the best i would give you but i love writing music that's one of my favorite things to do and that's what i teach most of the time is songwriting so i'm like these kind of panels i'm like i can tell you a little bit we want to talk songwriting let's go guys <laughs> we're all going to write a song by the end of this <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing this hour with me. And I enjoyed talking with you guys and come meet me and talk to me anytime. <laughs>